All right, this is an iPhone 5 digitizer connector repair. It's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to put a little flux on here. These are these are relatively easy to do. Um, I'm going to use a little low melt with my micro pencil. This will make uh, removing this thing a little easier with the hot air. And the low melt that I'm using is a 138 degree. 138 degrees Celsius low melt. It's not the chip quick one, which melts at like I think 80 some degrees Celsius. So this this is a little bit Don't jack anything else up, right? All right. So make sure I don't jack up any other uh, connector. All right, so I'm at 415 degrees Celsius and uh, flow rate of 10, and I'm using a six millimeter nozzle now. I've changed from a four millimeter. Uh oh. <laughs> Note to self. Don't be too aggressive on the left side. Sucks. That uh, sucks. All right, now I gotta fix that shit. Sucks. All right, well let's fix it first. Make sure I don't jack anything else up here. One, two, three. Okay. Let's put some flux on it first.
Let me double check that joint right there. I'm gonna, you know what? I'll just check it right now. Just wanna make sure there's no continuity here. It's not bridged. It could be bridged. All right, I gotta check the schematics. Hold on. All right, ZXW. Just wanna make sure there's a uh, continuity between these two pins. Okay, there are. So no big deal. Uh, everything is good to go. Alright, so I'm going to continue on with the connector repair here. So I'm going to change my iron to the FM2027. I'm going to put some more uh, solder flux on here, get remove this uh, low melt. And 10 with um, 6337. Remy, hey. Uh, dogs are about to go at it. You know what? I think there's another component here that I jacked up. Yep. Well, that's not good. All right. So let's see if we can get this back here too. I'm gonna get hot air. I think that's gonna be our best bet. Man, I really messed that up, didn't I? I think that's good. So let's get back to the connector repair here. Um, just mix. It's like lead free solder mixed with leaded solder with low melt now. So, anyways, clean it up and then wick everything away. All right, more flux. All right. So it looks like these end posts are going to be a biatch. So I'm actually going to use a little low melt on it.
Let's see. So the end posts are. Let's take a look at it first before we uh, go too crazy. Okay, it's on the bottom. There's a little tab sticking out. That right there. So that's going to be a problem. So let's let's get a little low melt on the end posts. Alright, so let's get to work here. Um, I think those are kind of sticking up, so I'm going to see if I can maneuver those a little bit. Alright. I'm going to try to use my tweezers to get that little nub and see if that works. Yeah, it's just too much. All right, I'm, I'm just trying to line it now, and then I think I'm good. I think those end posts are big enough that I can uh, tack it on there, no problems. So I'm just going to go ahead and go full force here. So uh, let it solder on my tweezers. I'm going to make sure I don't burn that. And uh, just make sure that, uh, you know, it kind of is laying flat here, and then boom. Don't apply too much heat because the connector is going to melt. Quick in and out. Make sure you get the entire joint. There it goes. That's one side. Um, let's go for number two. I'm going to get the main joints first and then I'll come back for the end posts.
Alright. So, take a look at it. I mean, that's pretty much like brand new right there. Look at those joints. Solid, right? This looks like a solder ball or something here. Get that out of the way. I don't know how that got there. I need to get my iron out again. Hmm. Oh well. Alright. It's a good thing I looked over there. So let's just test each of these joints, make sure they're solid. Otherwise, it's going to come back to you. And you do not want that ever. Alright, that's solid. So let's test it, and then we're good. Alright, so that's it.